Good afternoon and welcome to the finale of the Mixed Worlds 2022 from Academy Lanes in Haverhill. We have concluded with a highly anticipated matchup. It is two versus three. The 36 and 14 Coca-Cola versus Team 3. Price Wood Flooring 34 and 6. We'll have more details on the standings of the round robin in just a moment, but first, Mary Fonzi gets the head pin and starts off with a strike. So like I said, welcome to playoff bowling. Jeff Wester, Amanda Carroll. Again, my name is Greg Guiar alongside our executive producer, Bob Lee. Paul Grant and Dan Esdale covering other important matches. Right, they've got the prices match against uh, D-Generation X, about three lanes down. Amanda Carroll taking eight. An early two pin lead plus two balls for prices and Mary Bonson. Well, but, it's... <laughs> I was going to say, a uh, lot of money on the line actually today. $10,000 will go to the winning team, $5,000 to the second place team, but, you know, plus 50-50 plus raffle. Take. That's uh, three on the first... Sorry, four, four on the first ball for Mary. Amanda Carroll's strike. Got the head pin and a huge mix. Ten pin, only one that's left standing. Still filling the strike in Sponsy, and she turns it into seven. 17 in the first box for Mary. Amanda Carroll looking, waiting for the wood to stop rolling. Has a clear shot at the 10 pin. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Come on, come on. Nine box for Bonzi. We gotta flip these colors around, don't we? That's better. <laughs> Everything ship shape, setting the stage for a huge finish. Let's recap. Penny Lane, number one, they were undefeated for the longest time. Outside the Coca-Cola tied first, I should mention. Surprise to the floor, tied second. Well, both of gutter. these are the teams that beat Penny Lane, by the way, in the last in the last three matches. Prices and Coca-Cola. your head pin. Aaron Merrill left the four. Oh, Edmund back for Pelletier. Nothing doing. Oh, wait, I know. Oh, my wires are seriously crossed. I know what to do. That's the problem. It's, it's the names that are crossed. That's more like it. I had it. No matter, folks. So we're Nine apiece. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Goodness gracious, there we are. You know, it's a tough work here where the lanes are always shifting around and we're doing our best to get everything entered into the system between matches. Yeah, let's hear him. Chance here with a single pin. Aaron Merrill, a three and one split. If there's a tie for number one, it's a roll off. Well, they're just shaded left. A tie for anything else. Will be decided just on pinfall simply. That's right. Two and four taken out. If they were to come in, if they were to tie for second, then pin, pinfall would be the relevant statistic. Ten for Pelletier, Merrill nine. If Coca Cola can hold on and uh, Penny Lane wins their game, then there would be a, a one game playoff as I understand it. Actually, head's nodding, that's correct. Right. Forty-five, thirty-six. Aaron Saints here, head half Worcester. Sarah starting off. Wood tumbles this way. Three and one split. Sincere got on the pocket, left a two and two split for the third ball. Alright, alright. Alright. Harris 
just leaving him too. Saints here chisels another pin out. He's got seven to begin. There is ten. At a half mark start. <laughs> Here on the headpin here. Five, seven, or did the five fall? Not quite. There's Harris headpin. Is the switch full or is it? Yes, the six will drop. And he's got a three pin lead. That's here just inside. Harris wins the wood. Got into the four seven and the wood snaps back to take it. Here at St. Cyr gets a nine and has 16 through two. Okay, Nate Lees sets up on lane 34. Nate's carrying an average of 117 in the ACST this year where we've been covering a lot of his games. Uh, his high single is 189, high triple of 464. He, of course, is in the Northern Conference and still alive for the ACDSC Championship. Josh Daly on lane 33 has a high single of 185, high triple of 478 that we saw at the, uh, at the uh, U.S. Invitational. Nate Lees off the head pin grabs five. Nate Lees a 115 average for this tournament daily. Three pins with a blank in front this time. Leach hits the curve. Daly's try. High on the wood, and the seven will reluctantly go down. But down all the same. Good start. Leach gets a couple more. Seven. Lead is down to two, but three smudges on the, uh, on the side for Coca Cola. None. Prices. These from damn Chris. And Chris! Strike! Woo! It's demolished. Daily. Ooh, the two pin dropped out. Happy with that on the fill, but it's going to make this resultantly tougher. Certainly the back one! And the 4 7 9 10 is no more! Six fill. Ten plus in the second. And our first lead change. Bob Whitcomb and Chris Beauvert. Blue and yellow. Coca Cola and Price's Wood Flooring. The situation is this, if Team Coca-Cola wins, they're guaranteed at worst a one-string roll-off with Penny Lane if they win their match as well. Okay, we'll give you updates from that after uh, after these bowlers. Bowers first pitch hits the head pin. Wickham got the head pin. Now, that's 4-6, but there's wood to the left of the 6 pin. Now rolling away. Difficult wood in front of the 6 in any event. Bull Bear's try just left a 4. Wickham. Nothing kicked over to the wood. Over spins the wood, gets a pin. That is eight. Wickham picks another. Picks up two. 
So folks, this has been a three day, all weekend long, Friday, Saturday, Sunday tournament. 22 teams, 21 matches, as simple as most wins, wins. Well, and if they tie, it's gonna be a playoff. Possibly 22 matches. 1-7-10 for Bovin. So far, both uh, Coca-Cola and Penny Lane have 18 wins. 17 wins. The price is put for it. Whitcomb, 1 3 6 8. There's wood in front of the 7, the 10. Who knows? There's wood vertically to the left of it, quite a ways. He's on the head pick, got the 7. And indeed, nothing carried right. Look at in the pocket, sidewall, Karam gets it. 10 spare. Well, Bob, maybe we have a look at the first two boxes here. Bovair gets his 10 box and goes up to 18 through 2. And now. Leads only six, six, but uh, four marks to, to uh, Nate Lee's strike. So even if you give him two balls, it's uh, maybe six plus at least two balls for Coca Cola. Imagine that that should translate into something like a uh, 18 to 20 pin lead. Amanda Carroll from Team Coca Cola on the right. Out of Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine. Starts on the head pin and gets them all for a strike on spare. Fonzie washes out seven. And has a chance for her own. Just wide of the head pin. Bob Lee has scurried away to check a wet on Penny Lanes to see how their progress is going. Fonzie's third ball leaves her with a nine box, 35-3. We have 17. Mary, Mary Bonsi out of right here, Academy Lanes in Averill. Strike Bill gets the pocket and left a five and die. Bonsi from the mirror image, five and seven. Amanda Carroll with a tournament average of just about 107. Still filling the strike. Piece in front of the five looks angled away. She spins it left and the five doesn't carry him over. Nine fill. Nine or ten for each of these bowlers. Carol, Carol's got a ten. And picks up a pin. Against the Bonsi nine. 27 pins and two balls for Team Coca-Cola, but still plenty of time to go. Kate Pellet's here. And Aaron Merrill. For Bryce's wood flooring and Team Coca-Cola. Aaron Merrill, tournament average of 110. All right, Aaron, come on. One, three, five, eight, nine. Update from lanes 26 uh, and 27. Marcotte Ford is giving it, giving it their all. They're down 15, but they've got a strike and a spare to fill. So it's go, virtually, on. you know, virtually tied after the first time through the order. Now let's hear Kaleri left side. Two pin. An eight for Merrill. Good third ball to get her to that point. 26 through three. Now let's hear a tricky around. Nothing in the speak of. And the wood doesn't help. Six brings her up to 25 through three. Come on, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. 
Give Palantir's tournament average 101. Merrill got to the head pin. Doesn't make it to the king pin, but now there's a couple of pieces of wood. In front of the 6 9. What a Palantir, a huge hit. Turned in nicely. Seven and eight piece of wood covering the seven slightly. Merrill. Whoa, hits. on the wood and no. Oh. Piece of wood moving right to left. It's the seven. Not with enough velocity. That, that might have gotten an X, sir. Melatier trying a sweep shot too far right. There were pieces of wood potentially angled. Merrill picks 10. Was the shot on? Not quite. Oh. Nine box, Pelletier 34 through 4. Lead is 30. Plus a couple of fills. Chris Harris on the right, Aaron St. Cyr on the left. Harris on a spare fill. And in the pocket, skinny hit, sidewall bounced back, seven. St. Cyr, washed out seven, has a chance here. One, two, and four. Surprises what Flory could use it. Harris, five, nine. Not sure how else to do that. A piece of wood was there, but not really aimed at the 10. St. Cyr's drive, on the head pin, sidewall took it anyway. Twenty-six plus. Harris picks his pin and moves to thirty-seven, which is incidentally the lead. Chris Harris takes out five. Spareville got a good mix. What was tantalizingly close to the seven pin as it is six fill for Horseman. Harris twofold on the three. Saints here pocket bouncing wood four seven. at the one and five, so that is an eight box. Saints here matches. Status quo through that. Well, no, nope. Saints here had a spare six. That did punch the gap slightly. And now tournament organizer Nate Lees versus Josh Daly. Hey, the uh, latest standing sheets just came out. Josh Daly is showing an average of 126.05. I believe that leads. Let's add a bit more to that average, shall we? The spare fill collects eight. Well, the fill's good. 310. Yeah, his, his, his average is three pins higher than uh, next cover, which is... Uh, Tim Jalbert. Nate still filling a strike. Five down so far. Daly snapping the wood on the right side. Daly, who had the high average at the U.S. Invitational, making a good, good show for that. Nate Lees, that piece of wood was sticking its tongue out, and he tripped on the cap. Seven fill. 24 through two. Lee's bowling in his 15th game. He's held on to an average of 115 while also running the show. <laughs> that is, to him. That's incre incredible multitasking, I'll tell you that much. Well, let's round him up. It's a 115.5. One, one let's round him up to six. I'm a fan of the fractional accuracy, but absolutely. At some point, it just gets to be semantic. 
Daly in the fill. Bonus! Eight again. Crazy leave again. Three, four this time. That's Please. Sidewall bounce. Six. One, two, five, nine. Daly got on the object pin. Four spares to start. Have another fish pump. Have another mark. 22 over par plus another ball. Over the 10 of box par pace. At least just away. And he left up the head pin. Yeah, everybody now really focused going forward. So again, interestingly, it'll be Josh Daly and Nate Lees will be in the next money match on July 16th, taking on uh, the, our, our incumbent champions after after their fifth long John John Winchell and Brian Fuller Jr. who was in here earlier with uh, to, to, to visit. He's not in the tournament. Long time incumbents. Bobby Wickham next. Spareville. Got seven. One, three, and seven. Bulver gets a head pin hit. That? That's, well, we've that's seen the five pin, isn't it? It is. Where is it now? Though? I've seen it twice now. It's in the, well, clearly it's in the five and a half spot. Five and a quarter, no matter. Wick oh, gets it! Drives the head pin into the corner and take out the seven. Well, they're on the wood. Ten doesn't drop. Well, there's average is at uh, 123.8 for this for the uh, championship Ooh. through 16 games so friends up there up there in the top few friends we told you this was going to be a good one oh, there's yeah, 10. of course bobby wickham 121.4 when is he ever under 120. apparently never oh, Wickham with legendary wins like that Channel 50 comeback, being down 25. Possibly with more legendary work here. He's still dropping pins. That seven is threatening this heater. It's going to go nowhere. They don't come easy at Academy, but you wouldn't know it from watching them. The decks are fast. But the combination of a fast deck and a square pin, a square bottom, sometimes gives you those sliders like we saw a moment ago. That's fair! That? Three in a row for Whitcomb, and that's seven out of the last eight for the last two bowlers. Daly with four, and Whitcomb with three spares. Tough but fair. Bovair's piece of wood does not carry the seven pin, and he's open. He's only lost two pins, but his team desperately could use some marks. Well, folks, remember, if Coca-Cola wins this match, the worst they can be involved in is a one-string roll off of Penny Lane. Price's wood flooring, if they win, could still be in the mix, depending. I think I'm going to go make sure that the batteries are well charged. We've seen 20 boxes so far. 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 marks for Team Coca Cola. Very bouncy. Price is worth flooring. Two strikes and one spare. Carroll got on the head pin. Four, five, seven. Bonsai just a smidge full on the head pin and has a tough out coming up. Carroll's 
was looking back for advice. There's a piece of wood in front of the Ford 7. And to the right of the 5 A piece of wood looks to be pretty well pressed up against the plate. Going on the wood on the right side. Nothing ramped over. Monte collects a 7 for 51 half. Amanda Carroll on the red line, only nine somehow, despite the wood being seemingly in front, and has a 66 half. Down the lanes, they are in a deadlock. Ooh. Between Mark Cock Ford and Penny uh, Lane. So, big implications, and we would appreciate your help with that, Bob. Mary Bonsi on the head pin. Now, the wood didn't. It's not horizontally in front of the A9, but still looks pretty good. Carroll, head been hit. Wood screams off the sidewall into the seven. Or ten. Bonsi gets it. The wood was there. This wood is press against the plate and against the wall. It's the red line. Oh, it kicked over! And just an inch in from behind the 10. And Amanda Carroll has 76 through 6. Bringing up Kim Pelletier and Aaron Merrill. Aaron Merrill, the 2021 ICBA champion. Well, tier three, Merrill immediately after with five. Kim Pelletier, the 2016 mixed teams title. There she is with a dominant Bryce's Wood Floor team, tied second in the standings. Just away from the head pin. Merrill likewise shy of the object. Too long beyond the object, I should say. It's a matter here. Pelletier collects them all and picks up three as a result. Once we put that 10 on the board, we should show Kim Pelletier up with the 10. Match is still in a, in a deadlock next door. It's Lori, Lori Lewis in the sub role there. Lori Lewis. Shepa is her nickname. <laughs> Lori Lewis scares just into the game in the sixth box. And a nine for Aaron Merrill. We'll get all that on the board here. What do we have? Looks like a clear 54 pin advantage. Two spares versus two. Aaron St. Cyr. Into the three pin for its hobbles. One, two, and ten. Harris, and pin. Seven pin, reluctant. It's sticking around. Two pieces of wood angled at both sides of interest. Saints here, one, two, ten. It's a dandy. And he's got a 50 plus half. Harris kicking it across. No, oh, the wood dropped off the back of the plate after it got more than halfway across. Red line 10. 55. Aaron Saints here at a playoff run in the Pro Division. Head 
Pippen hit five. That's the fill, 55. Chris Harris, four pins, that's the four horsemen, eight and nine still standing. Since here made one dandy before, he's only got two this time, and he's got now coming up three, four, and seven. Looking down the list, uh, through 15 games, Aaron St. Cyr has an average of 123.4. He's the leader among those that were not in the original starting lineups for their team. And just a few pins back on his average from our leader. Harris just one of the head pin. Both of them coming up to some interesting third ball scenarios. Let's also see how they choose to play it. St. Cyr goes the safe way, takes the left side, and a nine for 64. Harris trying for the head pin, nothing doing. Well, he got one more pin, I should say. But a six box brings him up to 61. Three pin gain, 46. Now the advantage. The Phils could affect this right here, starting with Josh Daly of Spareville. Josh Daly is on four marks in a row. Oh, Daly's got the head pin, and he's left a seven. Good angled in front. I don't think it got flat. I don't think he'll like that. Daly crushed. 3 6, 8 fill. 44 miles an hour on that pitch. Look at this score balloon in a hurry. 70 through 4. Please. Wood, yeah, it wasn't quite horizontal against the plate. Too bad. Daly trips on the wood, stopping his mark streak. Not before going already on high 120s pace as is, even if he were to just pin out. Both bowlers get nine. Nate Lee's 51 half, Josh Daly 79 half. Josh Daly's home lanes are Central Park lanes and East Boston, Nate Lee's. 2 3 6 10 out of Exeter lanes and Academy lanes right here. Josh Daly, four horsemen. And a chance to start again. We've seen Wood kick horizontally across. Wood pieces of Wood like that. Not sure I was going to carry to the 6 and 10, and he got the 3 6. Hit that one where he wanted it. Daly on the head pin. Carried off the sidewall just in front of the six. Margin remains 54-ish, I guess we shall say. Daly picks up two more. He's got 89. And Nate leaves 59. Lead's still hanging above 50, though. Penny Lane and Coca-Cola tied first. 18 wins. Price is Wood Flooring and J.D. Seamless Gutter. 17 wins. Harry's All-Star, 16 wins. Stars and Strikes, 15 wins. Chunkers, Drywall Concepts, MGS Construction, PC Enterprises, rounding out the top 10. Bovair, three, three, six, and nine. Bob Wickham's bonus ball gets in the pocket and an explosive eight pin drop. He's got 62 through four. Bottom two bowlers. Oh, oh they're unlucky to chisel out just the three pin. Wickham just tailed away from the six. Bowmer will take a nine and have a 47 half. Bob Wickham's half 71. Looks like Sean Baker's gonna make gonna move in in the anchor position. Subbing out. Bowmer open 47. Five. On the second half substitutions. 
Baker carrying a 115.45 average through 15 games. Right on the head pin. A little full. 6 7 10. Well, the right cap is just behind the six. We'll come after that 71 half, looking to start again. Baker. This one, right Baker line, this one. yes! <laughs> Welcome the to ribbon. the game! And the final string of the mixed worlds. John Baker spares. Wickham, head pin. Wick kicked over and swivels Didn't around the six pin. By right the way around. And he's left triangle number six. He evaporated the four horses. But managed to hit the six pin with a piece of wood, but it didn't, it didn't connect hard enough. Ten it is. Pro ten. Well noted. Two out of three objects. But two great. Two out of three ain't bad. We can't take these tents for granted. You checking elsewhere? I'll be going down. Uh, I think we need, we also need the, the other matches of relevance. JD's seamless gutter is tied with prices going into this. Yeah. And Mary's All Stars one by, one behind. Yes, so please. We'll check on them. Through six boxes is a 64 pin advantage. You see three spares. On team yellow, Prices with flooring. Carroll with the diamond and a seven pin. Mary Bonzi has an eight fill and a 69 through six. And Amanda Carroll left the three seven. Bonzi tripped on the wood. The red line was there. Probably wanted to play it a little more left. Nine apiece. Well, folks, we see here Coca Cola still maintaining a huge advantage. Remember, if they win, and Penny Lane next door loses, they will tie at the top of the round robin, and only this tie will result in a one-string roll-off, giving us the chance to see a 20-second string. A 3 8 9 for Amanda Carroll. Bonzi got the Kaliri, or did she? Wood's screaming across, and the 6 is going to take out that, and the 3 and the 1, and the left of the 8 and the 10. And two pieces of wood are going to come back. They formed a very interesting T shape with a cap pointing at the intersection of the wood. Carroll, head pin. Nope. Didn't carry to the back rows. Bossy lost it left. So, down at the other end of the lane, JD's seamless getter has a two pin lead over Harry's All Stars. But Harry's All Stars has a strike from Tina Ward um, in hand. So, Basically, they've got a tiny lead through six. Ten box. They good, figure good to have a tiny lead. Single digits. So, Samantha B, your door dash order is at the desk. Samantha oh. B. Oh, it was on. Just hitting the eight pin was enough. <laughs> 378 to 322. Nate Lee's still shaking his hand after that high five. <laughs> She's absolutely intense, but is still having a good string. Oh, oh, got the strike! Oh. Lori Lewis, the second half substitute. Second ball, Lewis on the head, and not quite. Three hits. Lewis has been averaging 105.5. Now stands at uh, 76. Eight. Oh, 
There we go. Lori Lewis a good chance at a kick pin. Merrill of the Horseman House. Oh, yes! Oh, Sparrow strike! Benkin came off the sidewalk and took out Oh, the six and ten. Lewis mashes. Covering that big first ball. I thought you'd seen all the ways the full horseman could go. There you are. So after eight boxes, the margin continues to be in the high 50s, certainly, even if Rice's wood flooring fills well. As Team Coca Cola looks to move up to first. Harris took out five. Saints here, three pin. He's got the one, two, six, and ten. Harris into the head, and yes! Another sidewall carom! Another mark! Saints here, wide left. That's Chris Harris's second spare so far. Saints here, eight. 72 through seven. I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, if this lead holds, which is now up to 65 pins, and uh, Harry's All Stars ends up beating JD's seamless gutter, there could be a three way tie for third place, which I think will come to pins. And look at this on pinfall. Going into going into this game, prices was one ahead of JD's, eleven thousand four nineteen to eleven thousand four eighteen. So every pin counts, and we're talking thousands of dollars here. Saints here the difference strike. between uh, third Harris, place and fourth place. And Harris six nine is the lead. Just to the left of the six pin. He will take 10. And that's 89 through 8. Three bowlers of prizes with flooring on the bench with marks at the moment. First, tournament organizer Nate Lees against Josh Daly. Both of them have been on TV before. Josh Daly Candlepins for Cancer, Nate Lee's New England Candlepins. Daly's oh. head pin hit. Five and the four are wobbling. And standing. <laughs> Lee's just wide of the head pin. Got a big sidewall bounce and he's got the one four. That wood is behind the four so he'll need to make it clean. Daly can't snap the wood this time. He had four marks to begin. Please, just inside. Any more to the right, it could have angled off the head pin into the four. Instead, it'll be nine or ten. Daily ten. And Nate Lee's ten as well. This is why we watch the mixed worlds, to see the best of the best from all. All generations. We've seen a lot of classic legends, and now, including right this moment, the best of the best of the present day. And we've also seen a lot of up-and-comers as well. Welcome, welcome to the future of candle pin bowling. Josh Daly took out seven. Lee took it out four. Left the Dave Chester Cove special. That's his favorite. Our colleague here at Spread Eagle Productions. As long as I mentioned it, colleagues, thanks to Paul Grant and guest commentator Dan Esdale, who are covering other important matches all day today. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention if I didn't mention Kevin Burns and Anthony Karen helping out as well. 
Josh Daly picks up three pins on that exchange, and the lead grows to 76 minus two, two marks. Friends, if you like what you're watching, this is the thrilling final match. Unless, of course, we have a roll-off of the Mixed Worlds 2022. My name is Greg Guyar alongside Bob Lee. It's a pleasure to bring you this coverage. If you like what you're watching, please give the video a like on whatever platform you're watching on. Facebook, Bowling, your network, or YouTube, Spread Eagle Productions. And don't forget to follow us. Like, follow, and subscribe so you never miss a thing. Wickham six pin drops into the five. Sean Baker substituted in in box six. He's on a spare. Got the pocket this time. Pins drop forwards, and the three is left. Sean Baker also doing a little strange in a TV. Seen him on channel 50. Seen him on Candle. Candle pins for dollars. He gets a spare. Nine fill, spare, 76 in the ball for seven. Four sixty-six to three ninety-nine. Okay. Strike bill, half extra needs more. Second ball coming up. Baker. Got some action in the back. No sleepers. It's five fill. 81. Bob Wickham needs an out. Unfortunately, that's a three fill on the strike, and he ends up with 94 through seven. John Baker actually gained a couple of pins as a result. On his spare. Wickham did get the head pin and turns three into ten for a 104 through eight. Baker's nine brings slot number five up to 90 through eight between Chris Bovair and Sean Baker. All right. Bob Lee. Well, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Penny Lane is pulling away from Mark out, Mark out Ford down down the down the way. So it is setting up for a playoff in, in that if, if if everything goes according to uh, standings as you see it right now. But I, I want to bring attention. There's a good chance there's going to be a tie if, uh, if if JD's seamless gutter falls to Harry's and Harry's has a small lead down there on the left, it, it could come down to pinfall for third place. And prices and JDs are within a pin after, <laughs> you know, with numbers in the 11,419 to 4, 11,418 range. I guess that's not a range. <laughs> Both bowlers need third balls. The other thing I think you might want to watch out for here, Greg, is that uh, the high series so far is 648 for uh, stars and strikes. And uh, I, my math in my head, we saw a 364 half from Coca-Cola. So they were well on their way. I mean, they cooled off a bit in the third time through and the fourth time through. But, you know, if you watch watch their totals as they, as they, as they wind up, it's now at 4, 488. If they can get themselves to 648, there's a, I think their prize is for high, high uh, series. They can pin out about 570. Hang on. That's my math here. Carroll's got five pins. Then Kaliri. Monty, the four horsemen. Piece of wood in the way. Jerry picks the two. Great shot. Carroll, horsemen. Not the eight. Yeah, 578 if they just pin out here, basically. Monty pins out and gets a nine box, 103. Amanda Carroll is devious wood there. Ah, well, nine box, 113. 
boxes to go. 69 pins. Minus a mark. Six points over her tournament average. And Lori Lewis gets on the head pin as the 5 6 10. That's a 7, Phil. Aaron Merrill gets three. So again, programming note, this was scheduled to be the last match, but if we have a roll off, we will do our very best to bring that to you. Both lawyers down to third ball. Lewis picks a pin against nine. Chance to gain a bit. But a good third ball from Merrill. Gets six more and brings her up to 91. They're nine. Aaron, Aaron Merrill by here away by way of Auburn, Maine, and Gardner, Maine. Lewis has the hay bale. Huge hit, 10 pin. Sideways action. Virtual tie in the other match. Spare Romero. Got the cap to drive back. Lewis ends with an eight, and it is 101 for the second position. Bringing up Aaron St. Zier on a strike, Phil. And Aaron Merrill's final Phil ball is a five for a 106. Again, thank you. Thank you everyone watching live on Bowling Nerd Network on Facebook or after the fact YouTube Spread Eagle Productions. We appreciate your support just by watching. Thank you. St. Sears first fill ball is a four. Harris big hit, seven pin left. The big question if Coca-Cola holds this lead, of course. St. Sears strike fill is six and it's 88 through eight. doesn't get it wide right the big question if coca-cola wins will penny lane win if penny lane wins we're all going home if they tie then it will be a one string roll off seven versus nine sixty-five and Paul Grant and Dan Esdale giving us more eyes down the way and our executive producer Bob Lee bridging the gap of communication. Saints here. Six, seven, ten. Chris Harris by way of Quincy and Dorchester, Massachusetts. Two, four, and ten. It's here, red line. It's halfway across, but behind everything. Harris notes just the two pin down. Aaron sends, Nate Sear, excuse me, has the 10 box and a 105 string. Ha <laughs> ha! A nice 10 for Chris Harris to end it. 108, the final string. Her totals right now, 540 to 475. Bringing up Josh Daly and Nate Lees. Hey, the lanes are packed, but it was never really full. 44 lanes here at Academy Lanes. Nate Lees crushes everything except the cake then. Hey, bring the folks and come on over to Haverhill, Massachusetts. Academy Lane's a wonderful institution. Great hosts, of course. For this international tournament. Great restaurant, great arcade as well. And a 
proper good candle pin bowling establishment. Daly's got eight, 117 through nine. Josh Daly's overall league average is 123. Daly's overall average, 117. Leads a spare fill, sidewall kick, six. 92 through nine. Daly, 6 7 9. Lease converts. And he'll be well and truly into triple digits. As will everyone, Josh Daly open. High caliber bowling, everybody. North of 100 to say the very least. Daly didn't get that, it's beyond me. He ends up with a 9. And a 126, bolstered by his four opening marks. And only four pins dropped. Lee's his final ball. Mixes out eight pins and gets him up to 110. Don't you remember the stream will be off the air after this, but once we conclude this match, we might well stay on just to make sure we know the standings implications. I will wait as long as it takes to make sure we bring you the information we need. Let's take a look at Sean Baker on the right side. Second half substitute, head pin hit. He's been hot since he got into the game with two spares. In the four boxes, he's... Two boxes in the three boxes, he's... Two out of three ain't bad. That's what I'm trying to say, folks. Baker spares. How about three out of four? Wickham takes out the six. He's already in the 120s right now, pending his final two boxes. Almost got 10. One, 13. Forty-seven, and it is. It has to be mathematical at this point. In fact, if I did the math, Baker puts a nine fill on. Wickham a head pin hit. It is indeed mathematical. Team Coca-Cola it was is the winner of this match, and at worst. Will they be in a roll-off? We'll find out soon enough. Bob Wickham, 123. Sean Baker, 119 plus. This, I had pin hit, which converts into the 6-7. 127. So it has been decided, Coca-Cola has won this match. It turned into a 30-pin margin at the end. Next to an explosive Sean Baker finish with four marks and five boxes. The total between him and Bowman, in fact, that was an 80 half by Sean Baker to bring the anchor slot up to 127. So remember, folks, we'll keep it here for just a moment. Coca-Cola has won. If Penny Lane loses, they were tied for first. If Penny Lane loses, we go oh, home after Team Coca-Cola hoists the trophy. If Penny Lane has won their match, then we have some more bowling to do. Ties for first place are broken by a one-string roll-off. Ties in every other way are simply broken by total pinfall, and that will be that. The stream will be idle for a moment while we await the results of that. As Bob Lee, Paul Grant, and Dan Esdale, our colleagues here, that's Red Eagle Productions. Bowling Nerd Network, look on. Folks, in the meantime, while I shamelessly stall for time, thank you very much for watching this live presentation of Bowling Nerd Network. It has been such a treat to bring in these matches over the past three days. And we greatly appreciate your support. 
We'll soon find out the 22 team round robin is over just yet. Bobbly is on his way right now. Our executive producer here. And, fr and friends, let's see what he has to say. JDS, JDS, uh, Dave Godwin, uh, leading by one, made a one, two, six, ten spare to clinch a victory, to win by nine pins for JDS construct, uh, construction over uh, Harry's All Stars. So they finish, they finish with three losses, eighteen and three, and I believe that puts them in third place if Price is just lost and they now they finish yes. 17 and 4 so yes prices will go will, will take fourth um harry's all-stars will take fifth and i believe we're heading to um uh, there's a 50 plus pin lead for um penny lane I think oh all right we so need to know where that where that playoff will be settled and why don't you sign off we'll figure that out two winners at the top so folks thank you for those of you who hung on for that announcement Final score here, 576 Coca-Cola, 546 prices with flooring. If results hold, we'll have a 20-second string roll-off to determine the championship here at Mixed Worlds at Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Until then, my name is Greg Guillard, and on behalf of our entire team, bye for now.